What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be testing out the new PC my girlfriend Alex just built on the channel. And if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and click up here and I'll link it for you guys. But anyway, we're gonna be testing it in two different configurations. So first off, we're gonna be testing it in the $400 all new part config that I listed using just the Ryzen 3 3200G by itself as the CPU and GPU, APU, whatever you wanna call it. And then second, we're gonna be adding a GTX 1650 Super right here that we picked up for just $170, bringing our build total to 570 to show you guys the surprising performance of the 3200G and why is it a viable option to just start with using the Vega 8 graphics or even something like the Vega 10 graphics in the more expensive 3400G that Ryzen, uh, Radeon Ryzen has and then upgrade to an affordable discrete GPU like this guy right here when you have the funds to do so. So let's go ahead and roll our intro and get right into it. Let's go. All right, let's hop right into the benchmarks using just the Ryzen 3 3200G and no other discrete graphics card and see what this thing can do at 1080p. So we didn't really take any prisoners here, you guys, to be totally honest with you, uh, and just test a bunch of eSports titles like I see all the time because this APU is actually far more capable than many people actually think. So we actually gave it the same games we're gonna be testing the discrete GPU on. So first, we'll start with our synthetic benchmarks and usually I always do 3D mark and we're gonna go ahead and run our skydiver benchmark and then our Fire Strike benchmark. Next, we'll hop into just one esports title that I always test. You guys always see this in my videos, so we're gonna go ahead and test CSGO. Okay, and as you can see right here, we're hopping in CSGO and we are getting a very respectable 90 to you know 95, 96 frames per second. Uh, definitely more than I expected. And we're on, I believe, medium settings that we set it at. And yeah, it's a lot better than I actually thought it would be. So uh, integrated graphics, you guys can play some CSGO over 60 frames per second. So pretty awesome. Next, we're gonna move over to F1 2018 and use the built-in benchmark that that game has. So the reason we're actually doing this game is because it has some really great graphics and some really awesome visual fidelity, even here on ultra low settings. That's pretty much all we could do it at right here to get a respectable frames. Uh, and as you can see right here, when we get to the end, we're hitting about 46, which definitely is playable in my book. So not too bad from the Ryzen 3 3200G. Now let's go ahead and test Fortnite because I'm sure all of you wanna know if it's possible to play Fortnite on this machine using just the integrated graphics. And we're gonna be using the pro settings that I always use in Fortnite. And dropping right in, you can see that we are getting a very respectful 70 to 75, depending on where you're at and what's happening on the screen, frames per second. And this is a really, really awesome uh, perspective or prospect for people that are looking to get into gaming because a lot of people are trying to just play Fortnite and do it at a very, very inexpensive cost. So this is definitely an option for those people. Next, we ran Shadow of the Tomb Raider because this benchmark, uh, it always does end up showing the limitations of a lot of things. And it was no exception here with the Ryzen 3 3200G. And as you can see in the benchmark right here, as it runs, we're struggling to get anywhere above 18 frames a second, which uh, not surprising to me. And we are at the low preset setting. So yeah, this game is uh, still a crusher and this is why I still benchmark it because it is very good at bringing certain systems to their knees and actually showing what it can do. So at the end here, we ended up with an average FPS of 18 uh, throughout the entire thing and pretty much what I expected. Next, we gave the new COD Warzone a try. So I'm not 100% sure about how optimized this game is, but it's pretty well done for a battle royale that just came out. And so as you can see, out of the plane, not exactly the best, but as you land, we're getting somewhere from 30 to about 30 to 40, 35 mainly uh, FPS on this game. And obviously I get killed here really quick. So really you get to see what the Gulag experience is. And even in there, it's pretty much the same, getting anywhere from basically 35 to 40 at the highs and uh, 30 to 35 pretty much average the entire time you're playing. And I realize I'm running around frantically, but I got a shotgun that's automatic, so you know. 
whatever. So last was basically the most surprising game of them all, and that was Doom Eternal, a brand new game that just came out. And this little thing surprised the heck out of me with the numbers I was able to get. First of all, I gotta say, holy crap, this game is fun, you guys. So this is gonna be a new game I'm playing all the time. But anyway, back to the benchmark. As you can see, we're getting a very respectable 50 to 60 FPS here. And of course, that is on the low preset, but you know what? It still looks great and I had such an enjoyable time that I actually sat here and played the game for about an hour and I didn't even realize I was still playing it. So guys, this next one I'm gonna have to apologize for because I was going to test Red Dead Redemption 2, but after seeing the Shadow of the Tomb Raider and the Call of Duty numbers, I honestly figured I'd just save the time and not do this one because it's gonna be bad. And I figured I'd save that benchmark for when we put the discrete GPU in. Okay, so not too shabby at all, right? For some integrated graphics, not bad. So this is a very affordable option for someone on a limited budget, but just wants to jump into their games immediately and really doesn't mind kind of tweaking their settings and turning them down. Now, if a little further down the road, you earn yourself a bit more cash and then want to pick up an affordable new generation card like the 1650 Super we'll be testing, uh, let's see what kind of gains you'll see with this new GPU and how much you're going to get for that bit of money. Again, we're gonna start with 3D Mark and run Skydiver and Fire Strike one more time. In Skydiver, you can see that we have a massive gain right here, and that is to be expected because we now have a discrete GPU in there. And Fire Strike is no different with a massive jump almost to 10K here on the score, and if you remember back, we're only hitting about 2.5K with just the 3200G. Next, let's hop back into CSGO one more time. And as you can see right here, we're getting at or around that 144 frames per second mark. So if you have that 144 hertz monitor and you want that eSports experience, you can definitely do that. Unfortunately, if you want the 240 hertz experience, you're gonna need a better graphics card, but it's pretty awesome that right now on my G-Sync monitor, that works because of this card. And also I can hit over 144 frames per second in this game. Now onto the F1 2018 benchmark again. And at 1080p high settings this time, we're able to hit 140 frames per second, which is an extremely playable and smooth experience. And it looks absolutely awesome. And you're able to enjoy this game to its fullest this time with this new graphics card. Moving on to Fortnite, again with the pro settings. We were able to achieve well over that 144 frames per second mark, so you guys can again get a great esports experience with this title, and you guys can shoot and scoot to your heart's content and get those kills and get those wins. Next, let's get into the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark, and this time let's see if we can actually get some playable numbers. And we definitely achieved that this time, getting over 60 frames per second in this game, which is definitely more than playable at 1080p. And there's just a couple of dips on there, but on average, we are able to maintain 67 frames per second by the end of the benchmark, which is a great improvement from our last run. Okay, with COD Warzone, we have to actually have a playable experience this time, right? And with my COD optimized settings, we are actually able to hit over 100 frames per second right now with that new graphics card, which is definitely more than playable. And with a couple more tweaks, we could probably get a little more out of this, but I like where it was at because it was definitely an enjoyable experience and I was able to run, get kills, and have a good time. Now, since with just the integrated graphics, I didn't even try to run Red Dead Redemption 2, let's actually give it a shot and see what we're able to achieve. And now I didn't expect way too much of this PC because this is a budget oriented rig after all. And this game is super new and it still is a graphics card killer, even on my main machine with an RTX 2080. So at 1080p, at the mixture of settings that I use with my actual main rig, uh, we were able to maintain about 50 frames per second and by the end of the benchmark run, that's exactly what we got. So it's more than playable and uh, looks like for $570, you got yourself a nice gaming rig that can also play this game and probably GTA 5 just fine. Now, last but not least, let's hop back into Doom Eternal and crank those settings right up. And at high settings, we were able to achieve around 90 to 100 frames per second, sometimes even higher, getting into the 110s, 115 range. And it just goes to show how awesomely optimized this game really is right off the bat. And with this graphics card right here and a $570 build, you can play a brand new game for 2020 and get over 100 frames per second and play it with buttery, smooth gameplay. Man, I love this game and uh, yeah, I wanna play it right now. Actually just looking at it. Okay guys, now not only do you get some amazing FPS games with 
this discrete GPU, but you also get the added benefit of being able to use the onboard NVENC coder and the new Turing architecture to live stream your favorite games and take all that load off your CPU so you can actually get some really good FPS numbers while you're streaming. So it's pretty crazy that you can now game and stream on the same PC these days for this little money. Freaking nuts in my opinion. Uh, and if you're interested in how to see this PC actually does it streaming, keep your eyes for my stream notifications uh, because I'll be testing that out very soon. But anyway guys, as always, all the parts to the configurations I use in this video will be linked in the description. And if you do enjoy content like this, make sure you give the video a like. I always love seeing that. And since I definitely know that about 90% of you around the world are pretty much bored out of your mind right now, make sure you guys get subscribed to my channel so that you guys can quarantine like a boss and always have some new content to watch. So go ahead, stay safe you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Later.